because I'm, I'm so fed up with the way films are going. I really don't like movies anymore. I, I'm, I'm... You know what? I don't know. It's so funny because I want to be with you, but I don't, I'm scared to say that because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm bad-mouthing the cause even though I know in my ass, in mm -hmm. my back pocket, it's like there's shit out there. Yeah, yeah. it sucks. But it's almost like I want to keep it to myself because yeah. I don't want anyone to see our collective cards. It's yeah. like, yeah, we're fucking up like crazy and yeah. I wish it wasn't going on, yeah. you know? Since 1997, with his breakout hit, the drama comedy, Boogie Nights, writer-director Paul Thomas Anderson has maintained a reputation as a bold, ambitious, critically and commercially successful American filmmaker. He is known for his impressive ensemble casts, which often include Philip Seymour Hoffman, William H. Macy, Julianne Moore, Philip Baker Hall, and John C. Riley. Through intense, believable dialogue and committed performances, he creates characters that are pushed to extreme levels of emotion. Though he has only made five movies in his 17-year career, each is strikingly unique and rich for analysis. Common themes in his films are family conflict, depression, regret, and greed. You're too stupid to see it! You don't know what I can do! You don't know what I can do, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna be! You don't know I'm good! I have good things that you don't know about! No. And I'm gonna be something! I am! Don't you fucking you tell me that! No! Don't look at me! And you don't talk to me! No! His films are often quite dark. He rarely allows his characters clean redemption and forgiveness. Louder! Say it louder! I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my boy! Who beg for the blood! Just give me the blood, Eli. Let me get out of here. Give me the blood, Lord! And let me get away! On the technical production side, he is known for working with cinematographer Robert Ellswit. They are dedicated to shooting on 35mm as opposed to switching to digital cinematography. I think that if, if, if video is always used for video as opposed to pretending that it's film, then we'll have two wonderful mediums at work. But as soon as one starts to pretend that it is the other, there's going to be some confusion there. The biggest care that I have is digital projection. You know, this sort of theory that George Lucas has about digitally projecting um, his films in theaters. I think that would be a big, big, big no-no because ultimately it's just like watching the best TV screen in the world as opposed to watching 24 frames flicker through light, which is a, a hypnotic and wonderful experience and should never go away. P.T. Anderson's most notable technique is his use of long takes. In each of his films, he has at least one very elaborate, uninterrupted take that lasts two to four minutes. They often combine cranes, tracks, and steady cams. And like all long takes, they are extremely difficult, time-consuming, and expensive to execute. There are several advantages of the long take. They're a great way to show off your skills as a filmmaker. They prove that you have a competent and skilled crew who are dedicated to your vision. Long takes can be very enthralling because they depict a continuous, livable reality in real time. P.T. Anderson's long take are never just a gimmick to show off. For example, in his three-minute long take opening of Boogie Nights, he uses the unbroken shot to throw the viewer directly into 1970s Los Angeles, showing the cars, clothes, and iconic disco club scene of the era. He also introduces all the major characters. Can I 
up over there some plans. I'm gonna send them right over. Listen, Jack, I'm ready, I'm available. You put me in a movie, okay? We're talking yeah, box yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. Box yeah. office. Here the camera glides and whirls to mimic the energy of the disco dance floor. And then, the slickness of the skates of Roller Girl, played by Heather Graham. Hi, Roller Girl. Hi. Did you call that girl today? It's also notable that none of the characters are explicitly stated as being involved in the pornography industry, even though later, they're all revealed to be. I think that BT chose to establish them as everyday people before exposing their controversial profession. This objectifying angle on Roller Girl implies her exhibition as a porn star. The long take finally lands on Mark Wahlberg's Eddie Adams, the protagonist and focus of the film. The closing of the long take sets up an intriguing gaze exchange with Burt Reynolds' character. Their meeting is the catalyst for the entire film. His next film, Magnolia, also employed a long, complicated take through a large space filled with many characters. It takes place about 20 minutes into the film. The visual construction of the scene is a microcosm of the structure of the film itself. The movie is a web of life plot, peering into the lives of nine casually interrelated LA residents. Where's Richard and Julia? Oh good, um, they're here, they're fine, they're in the dressing room, so we're all set, okay. See you later. Yeah, you go to it, handsome. See ya. Okay, buddy, love you. Good luck, Rick. Hey, Peter. Dick, Dick, sorry, Dick. Fuck. Get that fucking name. Who's ready to beat the record? Darting around various hallways and intersections, this carefully choreographed shot spatially reflects the larger motif of the spontaneity and fleetingness of human connection. No bueno, no El Nino. Sorry, I'm late. What was your name again? Amy, Mr. Jennings. L, D, T, D, T, A, right? Listen, trust me, you know, Where's the news department at the studio? It's upstairs. Uh, have you ever been there? Oh, sure. Why? Well, I was wondering about the weather department. Uh -huh. I was wondering whether or not the weather people have outside meteorological services or if they have in-house instruments. Um, I can check on that for you. Maybe later we can take a tour. OK. On a more obvious level, the continuous movement of the shot develops the boy genius Stanley by showing his social awkwardness and his obedience as he is herded around by various adults. You don't know, huh? Well, the shot also sets up the stressful, zany atmosphere of television production, which continues throughout the movie. Hi, Mary. In this clip from the Magnolia Production Diary, PT's hyperactive personality okay, so, becomes clear. Um, um, I'm gonna watch my language from now on, kids, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna try and stop. How are you doing? How are you? I'm free. Good to see you. How are you doing? So, okay. You're confused, and the one the kids know stuff, and your, your panel turns, and it's like the kids, da 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 The adults, da 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 and um, we're gonna just rehearse it and then shoot it on videotape, right? That goes, um... La muratan vaso bella kanunu kutapi waze Ese bueho vakola bella His eye for the moving camera 
and his hands-on rehearsal approach is unique. Unbelievable. In this shocking scene in his fifth film, 2007's There Will Be Blood, when the oil derrick explodes, P.T. Anderson uses a very unsettling score by Radiohead guitarist Johnny Greenwood to match the intense images on screen. The protagonist, Daniel Plainview, played by Daniel Day Lewis, is carrying his injured son, H.W. Plainview, to safety. The long take track in this scene emphasizes the anxiety of the situation by showing the full amount of time that it takes for Plainview to carry his son out of danger. Quentin Tarantino, who was a good friend of P.T. Anderson, had this to say about the shot. It's been so brilliant cinematic set piece, you know, from the time that the oil derrick explodes into the time uh, that the, the soundtrack kicks in, which is, by the way, I think one of the most modern, uh, one of the great modern original soundtracks, uh, 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 you know, to be done of, of, of this last decade. But once that music kicks in and uh, you see long view running with the, with the little boy, uh, then, you know, it's on. That is a cinematic set piece. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just different from the set pieces he indulged in both Boogie Nights and uh, Magnolia. Hey, yeah. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe P.T. Anderson uses the long take not as a flashy, empty gimmick, but for various, motivated, intellectual reasons. His highly anticipated sixth film, The Master, starring Philip Seymour Hoffman, is due to be released in October. This time, he is a new cinematographer, and he is shooting with large format 65mm film instead of a standard 35. He has already stated that he is continuing his tradition of employing the long take. His fans and critics expect it, and he certainly knows how to deliver. I'm finished! Thank you.